Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy I. When last we left off, well, we evolved, we had a class change. We went to a desert and bought a fairy, and we got a... what was it? Uh, Oxy Ale, that's what it's called. And I guess technically we got a uh, Warp Cube, which is also interesting. But I think it's time that we go into Onrak. Also, I forgot to equip uh, good old White Mage with the ribbon that we found, which is a fantastic item. Very, very good. It protects against status effects, essentially, um, if I'm remembering correctly. And this is like uh, all the other Final Fantasy games. At least the ones that I've played and gotten ribbons for. There we go. Oh, that's still a ripoff. Pleasant dreams. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, how how uh, how are you all doing today? Or anybody that's watching this, anybody that might have a response, I'm tired. I have problems sleeping just as a general rule. I, I'm a very light sleeper, and I have problems sleeping, so I'm tired. But other than that, I'm fine. Today was a fine enough day. I did, uh... I did order some tea. I'm not the biggest fan of... Well, that's not true. I like tea, but I don't drink it very much. I bought some hot tea. You... You have Oxyale. You are the ones we've been waiting for. Please save the mermaids. And you're... Where are you, where, where are you going? Is, is that a bucket? What is that? I guess I should get into the barrel. Yeah. Oh, it is actually a barrel. I forgot about that. It just it looks like a barrel, and I was trying to be funny, but no, it, it's actually a barrel with a straw sticking out of it. It's a pretty cool effect. Didn't get that in the original game, now did you? Haha. Uh -huh. Seriously, did you? I don't I don't remember. And that this is this is a really cool effect. I really like it. Also, I fucking hate this dungeon. I hate this dungeon. I have um, there's a missable item here. First off, I'm going to save now because I'm paranoid. Um, there's a missable item in here. This is the Rosetta Stone. If you don't get it, you cannot go to the final dungeon. Well, I, the final shrine, I guess. Yep, yeah, the Sucket Shrine. Uh, I I like tea. I like hot tea. Uh, both. Yes, yeah, so I like both types of tea, uh, cold and hot. Um, but I don't drink it very much. I don't really have an excuse for that. <laughs> really? Um, how do I want to do this? <laughs> um, I just, I don't ever feel like... I never want tea enough to go and make tea, but I will drink it if I have it. If that makes sense. Here we go. Got much. Um, but I... I got some, and I got a sample thing, I think it's like nine cups worth of tea, and I'm curious about trying it, because I was told that there's like critical role style teas, and I like, I like gimmicky shit like that sometimes, um, and I hate this dungeon, I hate this dungeon so much, uh, I actually have, um, near-ish to me, a map of the entire dungeon, uh, on my, uh, tablet, like, Oh, two, three feet away from me that I can grab if I need to, so I don't miss the fucking Rosetta Stone. Anyway, um, I I like gimmicky tea, and well, I'm horribly curious as to how it tastes, and it's pretty cheap. Um, shipping was a bit more than I was happy with, but you know, not everything is free shipping, and, and I wasn't gonna buy fifty bur fifty bur fifty bucks worth of shit to get free shipping, so you know that's not happening. But, um, yeah, I'm, it's pretty cool. It is, if you're curious, if you like tea, it is called the Dungeon Master on Adagio, Adagio Teas. Um, the taste is Earl Grey Lavender with Chestnut and Vanilla, accented with Lavender Flowers. Seems quite interesting to me, and I'm, I'm intrigued to try it. If I had thought ahead, I probably would have got a sep uh, second one, <laughs> but I didn't because I'm, I don't know. I didn't think about it until a few minutes ago, and I'm not gonna go and cancel the order to replace the order, and that's too much work. I don't care that much. I'll 
I'll live with it, and if I ever buy more tea from them, then, you know, great. If I don't, then I don't. It was a learning experience. What, uh, do you like tea? Do you like hot tea? Do you like iced tea? Because I, I like iced tea. I like hot tea. I like coffee. Although, coffee I'm kind of weird with. I, I want to like black coffee, but I really don't. I also prefer um, darker roasts over lighter roasts. Ooh, rose again to level 5 hit points, 18 MP, not bad. Stamina, 9900 gil, I'm not opposed to that. Um, God, I hate this dungeon. I'm just remembering some of the other floors. By the way, in case you weren't paying attention, this is the third floor. This is the third floor. Yes, we start in the middle of the dungeon. Not the first floor, not the final floor, the third not angry at all about that. Nope. Um, anyway, what, what kind of teas do you like? I like, uh, you know what I was talking about? Coffee, I guess. Vivi can to level 3 hit points. Eh, 10 MP, eh. Int increase, not bad. Um, I like darker roasts of coffee. I actually typically drink coffee with, uh, basically I got the idea from, uh, Steve 1989 MRE info, whatever. Steve 19, 1989, you know, MRE guy. Great, great dude from everything that I've heard and read about, and one of my favorite YouTubers. Love the guy. Um, about mixing hot chocolate mix into coffee, and I, I do that. That is actually how I drink my coffee at this point. Instead of adding cream or sugar, I add hot chocolate mix. So, you know, it's, it's something different, and I quite like it. It's uh, not quite a mocha, saving game level, and uh, 7 hit points, stamina. Um, but it's not bad, I... I enjoy it, at the very least, and... Well, really, that's what's most important. Uh, I should probably heal you. You know, liking something is the most important thing. Because, you know, why... Why do something if you don't like it? Uh, which is... You know, that's kind of a double-edged sword, but I think it's a good philosophy with, uh, when it comes to trying new things, is, you know, try something, but if you don't like it, you, you don't have to force yourself to do it. Um, and if you do like something, even if it's weird, there's nothing wrong with it, like, at least with stuff like that. I mean, there's obvious exceptions to that, you know, if you like something illegal or immoral or something like that, or... You know, it har actively harms you, or it harms other people. Things, things like that you probably shouldn't do. But, you know, something simple like mixing hot chocolate with coffee, or I actually mix cinnamon with uh, coffee grounds, one before I brew coffee. That's quite nice. Um, it annoys pretty much everybody that I've ever made coffee for. <laughs> because, well, outside of my people that live with me, essentially direct family, um, they're fine with it for the most part. Um, they think I'd make it a little bit strong, at least cinnamon-wise, the cinnamon taste is a bit strong. The coffee is average strength for the type of coffee that I make. Um, yeah, it's kind of you know, indifferent, but I pretty much only ever make coffee for myself anyway, so it's not like it really matters. <laughs> um, as I was talking about, I like tea. What kind of coffee do you like? What kind of tea do you like? What kind of drinks do you like? I drink water, mostly. Uh, and, and teas. What kind of teas do I like? I like more subtle teas. My favorite tea is uh, Prince of Wales tea. Um, I like Earl Grey a decent amount. Um, I, I like things that are a lot more mellow, but still have a nice, strong taste to it. it makes sense. Um, Irish breakfast is pretty good from what I remember. I actually really want to try barley tea, but I never have. God, do I want to go up or down? If I go up, I'm going to be... where? Oh, God. Um, so here's, here's a little interesting bit of information. Um... You want to go to the first floor. The first floor is the end of the dungeon. That's where the boss is. But you go between the floors at other places 
and up will take me to the fourth floor. I I want to go to the sixth. I want to go to the lowest floor first, um, because it has the Rosetta Stone, and I don't want to forget it this time, because that was a pain in the ass, a horrible, horrible pain in the ass. Now I do have teleport. Um, or is it warp? It's warp, I think. So that should be helpful. Should be. But let me, let me, let me reiterate. I hate this dungeon. Um, the dungeons in Final Fantasy 1 aren't the best. They aren't horrible as a whole. Um, I actually like the design on a good amount of them. For example, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember names. Uh, hold on. Um, the Earth Cave, the first the Earth Cave, Earth Cavern, Earth Shrine, the first room where the Earth Fiend is, where the Vampire and the Lich is. I like that dungeon. Um, overall, it's kind of annoying because the encounter rate is pretty high in them. If the encounter rate was lowered, I would probably like it more. But um, I think the design of it's pretty good. Uh, the Marsh Cave, I actually think, is a very good dungeon because it promotes backtracking. I have no idea where I'm going. I'm going to... I forgot I can't open the map. Oh, uh, there's no map. Okay, I'm done freaking out. Oh, no, that's not true. I hate this dungeon. Um, let's see. But there are a couple of dungeons in this game that are really bad. Um, oh, what is it called? Uh, Mount Golg in this game <laughs> is not very good. I don't like floor... Uh, I don't like gimmicks where it's based around, you know, you take damage when you step and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> um, like, you know, this game has. Um, at least once. I don't remember if there's two. Final Fantasy IV has two dungeons like that. But the Final Fantasy IV dungeon and Final Fantasy IV, you can get past that. In Final Fantasy V, you can get past that. And, uh, well, I would, I would like to get past it. I don't think you can just cast Float and be on your merry way in this game. Uh, because I don't think there's a Float spell. Or in to level. Hit 8 hit points, 4 MP. Strength, Stamina, Luck. Well, I sh actually shouldn't say too much about, uh, his MP because he really doesn't have anything super interesting. I do wish that you could be a bit more of a Gishy kind of character. I like playing Gishes. Um, I mean, my current D&D character is a uh, full cleric and grave cleric as well, so I'm just casting spells, being at mid-range, uh, healing my party when they go down completely, but not... I'm not going to heal before that, though, because I'm a grave cleric. Why would I do that? I'm not going to heal until somebody's dead or dying. No reason to. Um, let's see, what else do I have? In other games, we're playing other tabletop games. Uh, one character is... Let me think. What's the best way to describe him? Grappler? Um, I guess Skirmisher, maybe? He's... The best way to describe it is... Ooh, diamond armor. Hell yes. Uh, the best way to describe it would probably be... Ooh, 58 to 66. Hell yeah. That is nice. Um, the best way to describe it is... He wants to go and grab somebody and then choke them. Because the way that that system works, once you have somebody grappled, like properly grappled, you don't have to roll to hit anymore. You just roll damage. You... Roll to hit to uh, try to grab them. Essentially, it, and it's a bit different than that because of the terminology in the game. It doesn't matter. It's the simplest way is you roll dice, see if you hit. If you hit, then you get to do base damage. Um, but the character is built to have. I uh, just cast second level D of it. Um, it's base damage. It's not a ton of damage. It's not insignificant, but. Um, if you have uh, spe any special abilities, like uh, improved grappling stuff, um, improved grapple damage type things, 
Uh, it was a good level. Six hit points, eight MP, int. Um, you are going to be doing a lot more on your turns because it's normally not worth grappling too much. Um, it's not like a horrible idea, but it's not something that you're going to want to do typically because you're typically going to have other options unless you're based around grappling. In which case, the best option is to grab somebody, hope you grab them, um, hope you can get past the penalties to grab them, um, and then roll tons and tons of damage because you have grappling modifiers. And it's, it's good fun. <laughs> it's just dependent on being able to do, you know, that. But he's also, you know, uh, his hit rate, actually I'm not going to have you do that. It is not the greatest because with grappling you get a bunch of minuses to try to grab somebody. Even with improved grappling stuff, it's still, uh, mm, let's just say, inconsistent. Um, but once she holds on, I'm doing a ton of damage at once, which is great. Um, and then there's other options like, ooh, just, just a light axe. I'm not sure I actually want to use that over, say, the defender. Castiera when used. That's actually useful. Hmm. If only I could give that to you. If only I could give that to you. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Oh well. I can't complain too much. Uh, well, I can actually use that here, I guess, if I can look through and find it. Um... Oh, shit. I didn't check the item that you were using because I sorted stuff. Ah, uh, because it defaults to the space, not the item. Uh, annoyed. Very annoyed. Very, very annoyed. You can have a nice big boy cure. That's fine. Um, yeah, but it's sort of... He's pretty good defensively. He's not the best. Um, his defenses are balanced between the different damage types. Seven gained a level eight hit points, stamina, luck. BV gained a level three hit points, 22 MP, and luck. Uh, um, because there's basically two different damage categories in the system. There's different damage types uh, beyond that, but you, only, you can only protect against so many of those at once but the defenses that you use for them, there are two different types, and I'm balanced between the two, while other people are more focused between one or the other. Um, and I, I'm pretty much just a balanced character in terms of uh, everything, really. Uh, Dieta is going to be useless, and there's nothing interesting else that I can do, so I'm just going to have you smack. Um... And the other character that I have, because there are four, basically four games going, it's basically one person runs a game a week, one week, and, you know, it is what it is. I, I don't mind doing that, it helps with burnout quite a lot. Um, but it's basically one person runs a week per month. Ooh, 12,000 gil, not bad, not bad at all. Um, let's see, what was the other one? It's a good way to describe him. That is a good thought. Um, he is... Well, it is a urban fantasy, more or less. It's based around... Uh, uh, monsters. Hunting monsters and killing monsters and shit like that. Um, but it's like modern fantasy, modern era, modern technology, stuff like that. Um, so pretty much you're using firearms. Unless... Yeah, well... How things currently are, um, there are no special abilities for PCs um, because of certain circumstances, but that's changing. Um, I decided if I'm going to change or not, but the current character I'm playing is based heavily on if you've ever ever watched The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. <laughs> based heavily on Hosto Gato, which is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. This is the floor. There are no random encounters on this floor. Oh, my prayers have been answered. Uh, yeah, mermaids. Um, it is essentially based on Hostel Gato. 
If the light of the sea is lost, we will turn into sea foam, vanishing forever. Oh, that's horribly depressing. Ooh. 9,000 gil, 1,700 gil, diamond armlet. Can't say no to that. Uh, let's see, who do I want to have that? Hmm. It improves it by quite a bit. I'm more paranoid about you at the moment, so I'll give it to Mr. Monk. Uh, give it to Adrian. I should have named him Adrian if I... Ooh, hi there. One of our friends went to see the world above and hasn't returned. I wonder what she's doing now. I do hope she's all right. Interesting. Um, he's based on Hostel Gatto, red hair. He has a metal... Uh, it's actually more of an arm over a... Uh, over just a hand. You can breathe underwater? How? How? She seems quite upset. As I mentioned, there are no random encounters. I think there are some spiked tiles, but that's about it. Save the sea. Restore light to the water crystal. Um, he's using, because we're, you know, monster hunters and that's sort of what we have to do. I have uh, a shotgun called Diplomacy. Are those the crystal jewel? The jewel? Are these the. Are, yeah. Are those the crystals the legends speak of? Just who are you? 4,100 gil, not bad. 5,000 gil, not bad. Um, he's heavily based on, or inspired by, Hostel Gado, mixed with. This is the uppermost level of the shrine. The Kraken, the water fiend, nests on its lowest level. Um, Hostel Gado and Ash from the Evil Dead. While the fiend of water lives, the light of the sea grows ever darker. Um, and it's a fun character to play because he's super silly. He's essentially, the way that I'm playing the character is, uh, he wanted to be an action star, but he lost his hand, so he couldn't be like the stereotypical like 80s and early 90s action star. It's a ton of fun to play that because I'm playing it purposefully and he is purposefully playing into action movie tropes even though you know it might be a detriment and he is aware of that if the light of the sea is not restored we will vanish as foam on the waves and I think the other players know that and they're fine with 10 gil lovely I mean 10,000 gil but you know 10, 10 gil hello can I can I get past you? I've talked to you before, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to walk past you and hope for the best. Um, and the other players, as I said, they they know. And they, they're they fine with it. Every Each of the players has a stupid little habit that they have. A diamond helm. Um, that, you know, might be a bit of a detriment. It's a disadvantage. It makes characters interesting. Diamond gloves. Those are fancy. <laughs> if you got some diamond hands... And we got the Rosetta Stone, the most important thing about this dungeon. Because if you, again, are like me and forget about it, you're going to hate yourself until the end of time. And believe me, I did. <laughs> uh, and you're all kitted out in diamond armor, uh, and you've got a diamond armor. So I think that's pretty much everything worthwhile here. Also interesting enough, this level... Uh, this level, specifically this floor of this shrine, wraps. Um, yeah, he, he's a, as I was saying, he was a super silly character. It, just tons of fun. I think I've looked at everything, so I'm just going to leave. Uh, go back down, try to get to the first floor or something. Um, and I would, I would recommend playing a character that has disadvantages and stuff like that, but isn't a detriment to, to the rest of the party. I'm actually going to save. Um, because there's a difference between role-playing and being like a constant problem. And I like interesting character concepts and even interesting things that, you know, might put you at a bit of a disadvantage for uh, combat or role-playing on occasion, but things that are just like constantly a problem. If you're constantly not doing anything, and if you're, say, playing a combat-heavy campaign, and you're constantly not doing anything in combat because you're, your scared, character is scared of combat, and you're, like, playing, I guess I said, a combat-based campaign, you're kind of a problem. But if you're playing an RP-heavy campaign and you're like that, and you don't really have much combat, it's fine. So, and it doesn't matter as much. So, you know, there's 
varying levels and no no group of thought in that is correct um different things work at different tables some people in some tables are problems and other times at other tables they would be perfectly fine it's just ooh, it has furrow when used that's vaguely more useful than the wizard staff actually hmm hmm it doesn't do as much damage it's fine you're a wizard you can be a wizard uh you're a wizard harry that's not harry potter very much <laughs> it's probably gonna annoy a lot of people never even saw all the movies never read any of the books don't i'm not a really big fan of harry potter um <laughs> white mage killed it i love it i love it white mage killed it with violence um yeah it's there it's a scale of good versus bad in terms of you know, what might work at one table won't work at another. Like, I try to run very balanced campaigns. I enjoy role-playing. I also enjoy running combat. Um, tactical combat, especially. I don't really like systems that don't let me do grid-based combat. Because I enjoy doing grid-based combat a lot. And not being able to do that is... I'm just going to use a base level cure on you, and you, and you. Um... Not having that is kind of boring to me, as both a player and as a uh, DM. But, you know, some groups play roleplay heavy games. They don't either know combat at all, or what combat they do have is theater of the mind and isn't, you know, very difficult or in-depth, and that's fine. Like, um, I like the Powered by the Apocalypse game, uh, Monster of the Week. I actually own a physical copy of the Monster of the Week revised book. It's somewhere, somewhere, I don't actually remember where I put it. Um, but I really like the system, it's pretty fun. And it actually, reading through that gave me some ideas, because I read it pretty early on in my starting to Dungeon Master thing, and it helped me get better at improv stuff. But I would never run it for a long-running campaign. I've run a couple of one-shots in it. But I would never run it in a long-running campaign. Reason being... Um, powered by the Apocalypse stuff, don't really have good base combat. We're going to level 8 hit points, 4 MP, agility, stamina. And, as I said, grid base combat's important. But it, it's still a lot of fun. And, I mean, hell, damage, you don't even roll dice, you're just... Uh, it's just you do X amount of harm with whatever special effects, whatever weapon or object might have, and that, that's fine. Again, I, I've run it as one-shots, and I think I probably will continue to do so, but I don't think I could ever run it as a campaign, because it doesn't have what I like. But a lot of people, and I've listened to a podcast, what is it, uh, The Crit Show, I think, that has done Monster of the Week stuff, and I believe the Adventure Zone had, did Monster of the Week stuff, but I, I'm i not the biggest fan of the Adventure Zone after I, find, after I found out that they're kind of... Uh, they fudge rolls quite a bit, and that bothers me. Um, I don't know. It, I don't mind the show, and I don't like disagree with people to say I, I'm not going to hit the bad show. It's just... I like the randomness of it, and from everything that I can tell and everything that I've heard, uh, crit roll is legit. They don't try to, uh, they don't doctor rolls, which is my big thing, because I don't mind railroading either. I, what I care about is, I like rolling dice, I like the swinginess of it, it's fun that way. Uh, do I want to cure you? I'm going to use a simple cure to, uh, save my ass. Um, I, I like the randomness of dice, to the point where my upcoming campaign, I'm inconsistent about what I want to do. If I want to do, uh, where's the to level? 6 hit points, 19 MP, agility, um, rolling for stats, or if I'm going to use a table for them. I'm unsure. The current thing that I'm running that is almost finished, I actually did a stat array. Um, and if you're curious about the stat array, this is a 5th edition stat array. Uh, earlier editions, I would probably change it. I would up the power a little bit, but not by much. Um, it is 16, 15, 13, 12, 10, 8. 
place those in stats as you wish. Um, and that's, you know, it's worked. It's slightly, slightly stronger than the average, uh, than the standard array or using points by. And that's like one that I wanted slightly stronger than average characters. And I'm giving slightly stronger than I would normally magic items and stuff like that. So I haven't gained a level 8 hit points, agility, stamina, if you begin to level 27 hit points, hell yeah. 11 MP, strength, agility, intelligence, stamina, hell of a level for Vivi, fuck yeah. Um, but the next campaign I'm going to kind of cut down on that a little bit because it's going to be, um, well, longer running, <laughs> hopefully, crossing my fingers. Um, wow, hell yeah. God, where are the stairs? There we go. Here we are. Here's what I was looking for and stalling towards. Um... I'm, I'm going to hope for the best and see what's going to happen. But next time, here, I've finally got to the floor that I was trying to stall to. Um, we're back on the floor we started on. Yay. <laughs> I don't mean to sound pessimistic. I'm just not the fondest of this dungeon. But we're, oh, slightly over halfway through, if I recall. But the next upcoming bits might be a bit on the difficult side. I'm not sure. But anyway, anyway, next time... We finish up the sunken shrine and, well, we've already been told what the fiend is and it's going to be a kraken, so next time we will be kicking a kraken's ass. And I hope to see you all there. <laughs>